What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again today, bringing you guys another Madden 25 Ultimate Team Tip video. And what you're going to be doing today is learning how to build a dominant defensive line for under 20,000 coins. Better yet, you're going to be learning why the defensive line that we build in today's video is actually fairly comparable to one that might cost you over 500,000 coins. Now, if you missed my previous video, what we did was something very similar for the offensive line, and that video seemed to go over pretty well. People seemed to like the content, and uh, a lot of people were saying that they saved quite a bit of money by selling off some of their more expensive offensive linemen because, honestly, guys, if you find good cards in this game that are cheap, there's no reason to keep a 100,000 coin card. Now, unlike the offensive line, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about building a defensive line in Madden 25 Ultimate Team. So when I'm comparing some of these cards that you're going to see here, the stats aren't necessarily going to directly match up with one another because one player might be a power move player, whereas another player might be a finesse move player, and it doesn't exactly translate between the two. But what's important to remember is that every player has something that they're good at. And that's the thing that we need to make sure that we focus in on. So without further ado then, let's take a look at the first pairing that we have here. And what we're going to do is start off at left defensive end. And we're going to be comparing the 98 overall Cameron Wake to the 89 overall left outside linebacker Justin Houston. Now those of you who are new to Mad might be unaware that you can actually take outside linebackers and place them at defensive end, and vice versa. So that's what we're going to do here with this first grouping. We're going to compare the Justin Houston to the Cameron Wake as a left end. So the major things that we're going to be talking about today are five categories. Power move, finesse move, block shed, strength, and speed. Now, again, some of these cards don't exactly match up because they're, you know, different skill sets for different players. But what we can see here at first glance is that Justin Houston is more of a power move player while Cameron Wake is more of a finesse move player. However, I think it's very important to take a look at the fact that the Justin Houston card is actually significantly better at finesse move than the Cameron Wake is at power move. So where they're weak, the, the Houston is actually quite a bit better. And where they're strong, they're pretty much the same, 96 and 97. They're also pretty much the same at strength, which is an important statistic when you're taking into consideration the pass rush. But the Cameron Wake card is actually 9 speed faster than the Justin Houston card, so when he does break through the offensive line, he's able to get to the quarterback a little bit faster, and that is something to consider. However, the major difference between these two cards that I noticed at first glance was the fact that the Justin Houston card has 91 block shed, while the Cameron Wake actually only has 76 block shed. For a 98 overall left end, that is pathetic. 76 for a block shed is just terrible and the Justin Houston card with 91 that's a pretty darn good statistic that makes him an overall very good pass rusher 80 speed is a little slow but it's not terrible and it, it, the reality is that Justin Houston is actually going to be a better pass rusher than Cameron Wake shockingly enough right and the Justin Houston card is actually almost one tenth the price of the Cameron Wake so, definitely better value here. Again, there are other statistics that go into all this that make the Cameron Wake card probably better. But when we're talking about the outside pass rush positions, we don't necessarily need to worry about the tackling and that kind of thing. Most of these players are going to have good enough tackling that it's not going to really make much of a difference. So, for our purpose, we're talking about mostly pass rush with left ends. And that's where Justin Houston shines, where the Cameron Wake actually kind of lags behind a little bit. Now, I know there are some of you who are really worried about your defensive chemistries, and when you take a player out of position like that Justin Houston left outside linebacker card, and you put him at left end, your chemistry will actually drop because they don't play the position that they're supposed to. So if that's you, I actually did include another option here with Corey Legit. And he actually has a lot of the same type of stats that the Justin Houston card had. He's not quite as fast, he's too slower, but he does actually have a little bit better block shed and a little bit better strength. So, that can definitely come into play. He's going to be a pretty good defensive end, he's going to give you the chemistry boost that you need, but, you know, overall I would probably recommend the Justin Houston card just because it's got a little bit better power move. 
But, you know, either way, both of these cards are going to be pretty darn good for defensive ends and significantly better value, again, than the Cameron Wake because the Corey Legit card is only 3,000 coins. So let's move on now to the defensive tackle positions. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice here with our defensive tackle positions is that we kind of knocked off a couple of the stats. And the reason for that is because there really aren't many defensive tackles that make use of finesse move. And the same thing kind of goes for speed. Most of these guys are going to have relatively similar stats in those areas. And, you know, it's not really that important because what really is important is their power move, their block shed, and their strength. So in this slide, we're taking a look at the 92 overall Fantasy Marcel Darius, and we're going to be comparing it to the Elite Don Terry Poe Football Outsiders Mid-Season Award winning card. Now, first thing that you're going to notice here is that these cards are very, very close to one another. There's actually only one difference in each of the, the three major stats that we talked about. And uh, while the Marcel Darius does fall a little bit behind, it's one behind in power move and one behind in strength, it is one ahead in block shed. But the thing that I want to point out is the fact that these cards are almost identical in the major stats that we need to look at when we're talking about defensive tackles. But the fact that the Marcel Darius card is 80,000 coins cheaper is unreal. I, I have no idea what it is about this Don Terry Poe card that makes it so expensive, but it's got to be one of the most overpriced cards in this entire game. It is not worth 85,000 coins by any stretch of the imagination, and the Marcel Darius card is worth well over 5,000 coins that it goes for. So in this case, take advantage of the cheaper card if you can have the opportunity to do so. Get rid of your Don Terry Poe if you have one, and just save the coins. Put it towards something else. Get yourself a really good corner. Do something with those coins. Don't spend them on this Don Terry Poe card that's not any better than the Marcel Darius. Moving on now to our other defensive tackle position, and this is another one where there is an insane price difference between these cards. Now, while the Marcel Darius card was closer to the Don Terry Poe card than the Terrence Knighton card that we're taking a look at in this slide is to the Mean Joe Green, they're still fairly comparable in most of these categories. The Terrence Knighton card is only one worse in power move, and while it's six worse in block shed, it's still pretty good at a 92 block shed. And then when it comes to strength, they're identical at 94. So when you're looking at the price between these two, you'd expect them to be quite a bit closer than they are. Instead, because Mean Joe Green is a legendary card, and well, I guess technically it's a playoff card, but uh, you know, it's, it's a legend of the game, I should say. Uh, Terrence Knighton is... 320,000 coins cheaper. It's unbelievable the way that some of these cards are priced in this game. And the Terrence Knighton card, I'm telling you right now, it will give you some serious pass rush and it will also just dominate against the run. It is well worth the 5,500 coins that it's gonna cost you. Moving on to our right end position now, we're gonna be comparing the right outside linebacker Robert Mathis card that a lot of people use as their defensive end to another card that you could easily put at right end, Brian Arakpo 93 Elite. Now, first thing that you're gonna notice between these two cards, again, is that the Arakpo is better at power move, while the Mathis is better at the finesse move. And the finesse move, it's not even close. I'm not gonna try and tell you guys that it is. Uh, the Arakpo card is 19 worse at finesse move, whereas the Arakpo card is only nine better at power move than the, the Robert Mathis. But where the Arakpo card shines is the fact that it has seven better for block shed and nine better for strength. And those two things will definitely help you with the power move to give you a really good pass rusher. And while he's three slower at 86 speed versus Mathis's 89 speed, he's still fast enough to get after the quarterback on almost every single play. Very good value here for 6,500 coins, whereas you would be spending 60,000 on the Robert Mathis. Now, those of you who are worried about your defensive chemistries, I did also include this Adrian Claiborne card, which has a lot of the same type of skill sets as the Brian Arakpo did. It does have the same type of thing in terms of power move being better, its block shed is better, its strength is better than the Mathis card, but in this case, it's even worse at finesse move. So you're going to see him pretty much exclusively working with the power move on your defensive line. And again, 
As you could probably imagine, with his finesse move being only a 70, his speed also lags behind quite a bit at only a 76. So he is fairly slow. He's not going to be as good of a pass rusher as the Arakpo, but still a pretty darn good card. Definitely, again, worth the 6,000 coins if you're trying to save a little bit of money here and eventually work yourself up to a Robert Mathis. This is the kind of card that you could put onto your team and still get some solid production from. So guys, that's going to do it for today's video on how to build a dominant defensive line for under 20,000 coins. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support that you guys have given to me. I did actually surpass 1,000 subscribers today on YouTube. And obviously, I couldn't have done that without all of you. So thank you guys so much for all your support. Shout out to xRyan915 for all the love that he's given to me. Chase Plays Madden, London RTR, iJoshify. Uh, you know, all you guys that have given me shout outs in videos, I, I really do appreciate it. Everybody who likes my videos, everybody who comments on them, thank you guys so much. We're going to keep putting together some Madden Ultimate Team content for you guys. I hope you continue to enjoy it. If you did like today's video, please press the like button below. Leave a comment. Let me know if it worked for you. Let me know if there's other cards that I might have missed out on that might even be better than the ones that I put in this video. And don't forget to press that subscribe button because we're going to be bringing you more content like this, telling you how to build a team on a budget. And of course, you'll also be able to see my trials and tribulations as I try to put together a Super Bowl run on head-to-head -head seasons. Thank you guys again so much for your support. I appreciate it, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.